Okay, so I'm going to talk about a fundamental principle in machine learning, which is the principle of Occam's razor. Now, um, this is the foundation, as I mentioned, for statistical learning theory, which is the theoretical foundation that underlies all of machine learning. And it, the, the principle of Occam's razor is very easily stated. It says that the best models are simple models that fit the data well. And uh, it's attributed to William of Occam, who had no clue what machine learning was, um, but he, he simply said that among all hypotheses that predict equally well, we should choose the one with the fewest assumptions. Okay, he said something, something on the order of that. And um, I, I love this whole idea because it essentially forces um, us as machine learning people to, to um, formalize the notion of what simplicity means. Okay, so let's consider this plot. This is a plot of, uh, here we're trying to predict someone's income as a function of the number of clicks on the Business Week website that they click, okay? So uh, here we have a whole bunch of data points and we have a model that's totally overfitted and won't generalize well. So that when we see new points, there are new test points that the model just won't be able to predict very well on them, right? We would rather have preferred something like a straight line that would have predicted well out of sample, not just in sample. Okay, so the fundamental plot of statistical learning theory looks like this. So along the horizontal axis is the complexity of the models that we're working with. And if we work with more complex models, we're likely to overfit. And we work with less complex models, we're likely to underfit. Okay, so here's the plot. Okay, so let's just go over this here. Now I have training, I have a plot for training error and I have a plot for test error. Now overfitting is when we've essentially memorized the training set and we can't generalize to the test set. So on the overfitting side, that's where the training error is very low, but the test error is very high because we couldn't generalize. The model was too comp the model class was too complex. And then on the other extreme, we have models that are too simple. And those models just simply cannot fit the data well, and so they have a large training error. But they generalize well. They, they, at least they, um, they perform the same on the training as on the test, right? That's what generalize means. Generalize means that you get similar performance on the training as you do on the test. Okay, so that whatever you see on the training set, that's what you expect to get um, during, during testing. And so the hope that this um, plot gives us is that there are a set of good models that fit well enough, that fit the training data well enough, but that don't, that the, but the models are not so complex that they would overfit. And there's a sweet spot where you get good training error, but also good test error. It's like the simplest model that fits the data well, right? That's what we're looking for. Okay, and so it's telling us that we need a balance between accuracy and some quantified notion of simplicity. So the most common machine learning methods, they choose the function f, the model f, to minimize some kind of, um, they minimize training error, but they also minimize some level of complexity, some quantified version of complexity. So complexity, simplicity are sort of two sides of the same coin. And then also uh, the, the idea of, of modeling, uh, trying to minimize complexity also helps to thwart the curse of dimensionality. The curse of dimensionality is the, is the notion that as you increase the number of features in your data set, the problem becomes exponentially harder. So if you have six features, that's much easier than if you have seven features, like much, much, much easier. And if you have 40 features, that problem is much easier than if you have 41 features. So um, if you sort of force your model to be less complex, then even if, you, even if you have like a huge number of, of features, right? If you're in a very, very large feature space, well, um, you know, as long as you, you, you are training models that are, are simpler, you're actually sort of working in essentially a much less complex space and then hopefully you'll be able to generalize. Okay, so this is exactly what I said. To generalize, we wanna keep the model simple. We choose the function f to minimize some 
balance between accuracy and complexity. And this agrees with the principle of Occam's razor, which says we should aim for a simple and accurate explanation. And so the, the way that complexity is often incorporated is using a, reg, a regularization term. So it's, it's some mechanism to keep the model simple. And that regularization term can be almost anything. We can, we can use lots and lots of different um, notions of simplicity. So you could try to make the model have fewer terms in it, or if it's a decision tree, um, you could make the model have fewer leaves in it. Um, you, if, you're, if you really enjoy Bayesian analysis, you could try to have um, the model agree with your prior knowledge of what the model should look like. Okay, so I've put in just a few examples of loss functions that I've given earlier in earlier lectures. So I put here, um, you know, three loss functions, and then I put a couple of standard regularization terms that often get used. Um, so for, for this is the regularization that I put here is for linear models. Um, and here you, you'd sometimes take the, the sum of the squares of the coefficients and that's the L2, um, that's called L2 regularization, or it's called, also called a ridge penalty. And it's used in ridge regression and support vector machines. And then um, you could also take the, uh, ab the sum of the absolute values of the coefficients to be the regularization term. And that's called L1 regularization that's used in the lasso algorithm, but also it's, it's implicitly used in Adaboost as I'll describe when we get to the boosting lecture. Okay, and then this is just some special cases of it. So ridge regression is the algorithm that minimizes squared loss regularized by L2, L, regularized with L2 regularization. And then support vector machines use the hinge loss that I mentioned to you earlier, this, this hinge, hinge loss function um, with L2 regularization. And again, we'll talk about these. Uh, each, each one of these has its own lecture dedicated to it. Okay, so as you probably noticed that these, loss fun these, these algorithms are all kind of somewhat similar to each other, right? They have similar loss functions and they have similar regularization terms. So you'd think that they would all kind of perform similarly. And in fact, they often do if they, if they use the same features, um, if, if they use the same features. But the catch is that these algorithms actually end up using very, very different feature spaces. And that's what makes them interesting and different and why it warrants a whole class on this topic. Thanks. <laughs>